Kia ora tātou katoa. Today, Cabinet has approved the extension of Alert Level 2 until New Zealand achieves 14 consecutive days without any new cases of community transmission of COVID-19. Cabinet has also agreed to extend the travel advisory, restricting inwards arrivals to our country until 11.59 p.m. on Tuesday, the 28th of September this year. I know that this news may be disappointing for many people, but I urge us all to be patient during this tough time. However, there is some good news with additional financial support announced today and an update on our stranded people in New Zealand. Our decision to extend Level 2 for another two weeks was made carefully with much thought and on the advice of our health advisors and professionals in Te Maraiora and also in New Zealand, where Level 4 has been extended further in Auckland for another week until 11.59pm on Tuesday the 21st of September and Alert Level 2 for the rest of New Zealand. This is so officials can be sure there are no unknown chains of transmission of Delta in the community that could flare up before enough people are protected by vaccination. Here in our country, we are one of the few countries in the world that has managed to keep COVID out. And we must not do anything to jeopardise the safety of our people. While we acknowledge that at some point in the future, all countries will need to live with COVID-19, that time has not come for our nation yet. We do not want an outbreak here. The impact on our health resources and on our economy would be devastating. That's why we have to do everything possible to protect the health and well-being of our people as well as our economy. And that's why today Cabinet decided to extend Alert Level 2 until there is no community transmission in New Zealand. We hope the day that comes, that day will come soon and our thoughts and prayers are with everyone in New Zealand, particularly those in the Auckland region. We all know that at Level 2, the impact of having no visitors from New Zealand is very significant for our economy. That is why we are announcing that wage subsidies for eligible businesses will be paid for a full month of September. I'm also pleased to announce that the reinstatement of one round of business grants will be paid in October. There will also be grants for sole traders. These grants will be slightly higher than last time, but with the same criteria of business size by turnover and by employee number. So while I'm hoping for the best case scenario of a short border closure with New Zealand, we have $15 million set aside for additional business support in our current budget, should it go on for longer. Remember too that our tourism market is resilient and so is our economy. We saw how fast tourism bounced back in May, so we are confident this will happen again. Information on the eligibility can be found on the MFM website and also on the MFM social media accounts. Let me now talk about the 300 Cook Island residents and permit holders currently stranded in New Zealand. The good news is that planning can begin for the managed return of those people stranded in the regions of New Zealand that are at alert level 2 or below. Unfortunately, for those people in the Auckland region, this will not happen until Auckland moves out of alert level 4. We have no option but to adhere to the restrictions that New Zealand has imposed on everyone, including our people that are stuck there. We've come too far and made too many sacrifices to take the risk of bringing Delta here. So while we're working behind the scenes on managing the return of our people as soon as possible, please understand that for those in Auckland, it's on hold for now. For the others, it's anticipated they'll be repatriated on a dedicated flight from Christchurch. 
and we are working with the airlines and other stakeholders to confirm details soon. When it does happen, all people returning will need to complete a Cook Islands managed return application form. They'll need to have a period of at least seven days in managed isolation on their arrival home, in addition to a negative test, a test result 72 hours before their departure. Further details about this will be provided directly to them. For those people sheltering in Auckland, if you need any assistance, please contact the Cook Islands High Commission in New Zealand. Further information will be provided to you about the enhanced support if necessary. Today, Cabinet gave careful consideration to what it would take to open up our borders again to New Zealand. Our current thinking is that the quarantine-free travel between our two countries will not happen until our government is fully confident there is no community transmission of COVID-19 in New Zealand. Under current policy there, this means when New Zealand moves to alert level one. Cabinet has also decided that all future visitors to the Cook Islands who are aged over 12 years will need to be fully vaccinated unless they have a medical exemption. A reminder here about what I said before. Our tourism market is resilient and so is our economy. Tourism bounced back fast in May and we are confident that this will happen again. Also a reminder for Cook Island residents that travel to New Zealand at this time, this is not recommended. Anyone thinking about this should be aware that they will not be eligible for managed return due to entering New Zealand while border closures are in place. Contact tracing is a critical part of managing any potential COVID-19 outbreak. So a heads up to everybody that we intend moving to mandatory tag-in or sign in with CookSafe by the beginning of October. Remember that by sticking to the Level 2 guidelines and by being diligent about hand washing, physical distancing, mask wearing and tagging in with CookSafe, you're helping to keep our communities safe. Finally, I'd like to express my sincere thanks to all of our people for your cooperation for your vigilance and for your patience during these difficult times. We are fortunate to still be a COVID-free nation. So may God continue to bless us and bless our country. Kia ora e kia